Well, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order this December 7th special district number four meeting of the Pierce County Council. The time is 6.32 p.m. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council Member Campbell. Excused. Council Member Kruber. Here. Council Member Denson. Here. Council Member Herrera. Excused. Council Member Hitchin. Here. Council Member Morrell. Here. Council Member Mello. Here. You have five members present. We have five members present and a quorum. Um, for members' information, the, uh, the microphones are being uh, controlled by uh, our team at PCTV, so we don't need to control them ourselves. We're at item number three, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag and our land acknowledgement. Please join us in listening to the land acknowledgement and Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag, followed by a moment of silence dedicated to the lives lost 82 years ago today at Pearl Harbor and to the three lives lost to gun violence yesterday at the University of Las Vegas. Councilmember Hitchin, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag and the land acknowledgement? Yes, Chair. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional homelands of the Coast Salish tribes. Coast Salish people have lived on and stewarded the, these lands in time immemorial and continue to do so today. We recognize that this land acknowledgement is one small step towards true allyship and we commit to uplifting the voices, experiences, and histories of the indigenous people of this land. I'd like to invite all that can stand to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I really want to thank everyone for turning out uh, this evening for our uh, 2023 in-district meeting. We are here at uh, Edison Square on South T Tacoma Way, uh, especially for those who are watching at home on PCTV or will watch this in the future on PCTV. We are at the bustling um, small business district uh, here in South Tacoma Way. We're going to hear from um, some of our hosts in just a little bit, but I, I want to thank especially those who took time out of their busy lives to join us in person at this in-district meeting um, to learn a little bit about what's going on and hopefully share your thoughts. So um, I'm Ryan Mello. If you live in District 4, I have the great honor of representing you on the Pierce County Council. And I would love to ask for my colleagues to introduce themselves. And just as a reminder, PCTV is controlling the microphones for us this evening. So if I could start with uh, my colleague, Councilmember Kruber. Thank you, Chair. I am so grateful to be here. I don't get to, to this part of town very often. Just had a great bite of food here. Have to come back. And I represent the third council district. I'll start with on South Hill at 176th and Meridian. I have the west side of Meridian. I go on out through Fredrickson, out to Spanaway. I have Spanaway Lake, and there are a lot of lakes in my district. Headed on back up down to Roy, McKenna, over through Lacamas, Eatonville, out to Mount Rainier. Ashford and Elby are there. And then come back around north to the going through Kapowson and back up to Frontier Park and back to the section of 176, the Meridian. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councilor Hitchin. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have the honor of representing District 6, which includes Lakewood, DuPont, Stillicum, Ketron, Anderson, and McNeil Islands. I also represent Joint Base Lewis McCord and where I call home, Parkland. Only half of Parkland, but I love all of Parkland. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Morrell. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Dave Morrell, and I represent District 1 in Pierce County. District 1 is unincorporated South Hill, out into Graham, down into the valley, into Ording. I've got a lot of the small little towns of uh, South Prairie, Wilkeson, Buckley, and Carbonado. And then I've got Lake Taps, Bonnie Lake, and then I jump all the way up to Greenwater, 
and have a little ski resort called Crystal Mountain in my district. So it's great to come down into District 4, and uh, I love what you've done with the place. It's a great <laughs> job. Thank you. Thank you. Customer Denson. Thank you, Chair. My name is Robin Denson, and I am the council member for District 7. And District 7 is North Tacoma, Ruston, part of West Tacoma, and then everything on the west side of the Narrows Bridge, so Gig Harbor, Fox Island, Key Peninsula, surrounded by a lot of water, so it's pretty easily defined. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Ryan Mello again, and I uh, represent District 4, so it includes South Tacoma. Of course, um, that's why we're here. Uh, also includes the communities of University Place, Fircrest, um, other parts of Tacoma, including East Tacoma and South End Tacoma up to Pacific Avenue. Includes the Hilltop and Central Tacoma and, uh, and downtown Tacoma. So that's what makes up District 4. Two of our colleagues um, have some family obligations that preclude them from being with, being with us this evening. They include Councilmember Paul Herrera. We were just at his in-district meeting in the city of Sumner at Sumner City Hall uh, not too long ago. Uh, he represents Sumner, Puyallup, um, Edgewood, the other parts of South Hill that Councilor Morell doesn't, doesn't represent, um, communities like that. And then our colleague, uh, Councilmember Campbell, uh, represents the other part of Parkland that Councilmember Hitchin does not represent, and other communities through the central part of Pierce County, all the way up to Browns Point, Dash Point, Northeast Tacoma, a lot of East Tacoma, and um, Fife. So again, we, we're really grateful that you're uh, coming out tonight to learn about um, some of our program, uh, and there's time at the end for, I think, the most important part to hear from our community about what's on your mind. I would love to ask our staff to briefly introduce themselves. Ms. Long? All right, thank you and good evening. My name is Susan Long and I serve as the council's uh, legal counsel. And I've been with the council for several decades. Actually, it's a very, very nice to be here tonight. Thank you. My name is Audrey Persons. I am an associate clerk with the office of the Pierce County Council and I've been with the office for a little over four years. My name is Brian Dominique. I'm the communications manager with the Office of the County Council, and it's great to be here tonight. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Jair Winesbury. I'm the communications coordinator with the County Council. Been here six months yesterday. I'm uh, really excited for tonight. Thank you. Um, I, I also want to acknowledge um, the real brains in operation of District 4, uh, my amazing council assistant, Evan Kepfler. Many of you know Evan and work with Evan, and he solves a lot of problems for a lot of constituents in District 4, and I'm eminently grateful for um, how effective he is and, and uh, his dedicated public service. So Evan uh, coordinated tonight like he coordinates most things in my life. So thank you, Evan, um, for all that you do for the community members of District 4. And we also have many staff from PCTV, so uh, it takes a lot to coordinate and bring these, um, these community meetings out in community and make them uh, transparent and accessible to the public. One of the central ways we do that is the amazing team at PCTV. We have a couple of uh, gentlemen in the back and a bunch of folks in the truck uh, behind us here, behind Edison Square here. So thank you to the team at PCTV who does so much to bring Pierce County uh, uh, work out to the community. Did I miss anybody? If I did, I apologize. Well, we're gonna get into our meeting. Um, item four is the approval of the agenda. Are there any objections to approving today's agenda as presented? Seeing none, the agenda will stand approved. On today's council agenda, there will be an opportunity for public comment under community forum where you may address the council on any topic that is not on today's agenda. Uh, we ask you to please adhere to our rules that are at the uh, bottom of our agenda uh, and be mindful of the, of the decorum expected during this meeting. So for more information about our rules for public participation, we draw your attention to the bottom of page one of today's agenda. Item five is uh, the consent agenda. There are no consent agenda items this evening. That does bring us to section six, messages from the executive, 
judges or prosecuting attorney, we are privileged to have our Pierce County Executive Bruce Stanmeyer with us. Executive Stanmeyer, thank you for making time to be with us. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. For the record, Bruce Stanmeyer, I have the privilege of representing all the people of Pierce County. Uh, Mr. Chair, you told me I was coming to the North Pole. I wore my Santa tie, so here we go. Um, and I particularly appreciate the moment of silence in the remembrance of the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor. Uh, as the chair well knows, having lived in Hawaii, I also was stationed in Hawaii. That was my last duty station in the Navy. As a matter of fact, I, my, the office, or the building right next to my office was the St. Pac Fleet headquarters on the day of the attack, and there is still uh, bullet marks in the building. So it was very, remembering this day when you are stationed in Pearl Harbor is particularly powerful. Uh, one of the times my son had the opportunity to raise the flag over the Arizona Memorial. So I really appreciate that we're keeping that in mind, what, what our nation has been through. And there are some also aspects of that, like the inter internment or the incarceration of our Japanese residents and neighbors that we also need to keep in mind uh, from that time. Um, you know, as the chair well knows and as the council members know, District 4 is somewhat unique among all of the districts. When most people think of the county government and the services that the county provides, many people know that they provide mostly almost all the services in unincorporated Pierce County and that cities and towns oftentimes provide all those services themselves, or many of the services. Of course, not the judges and not the prosecutor, not Superior Court, not, not our prosecutor of felonies. But we do have very strong partnerships where we deliver services to many of our cities. Uh, just next week, I'll be meeting with the city of Fircrest, where we're talking about sewer service areas, because we provide sewer service to parts of Fircrest and parts of University Place, including Lakewood and others. We also provide a number of road services to folks. We provide contracted uh, traffic signal services and even striping services to a number of jurisdictions throughout the county. As the chair is well aware, we provide contract police services in the city of University Place. Our Pierce County deputies are out there keeping that community safe. And there are a whole host of other things, including Obviously, you're going to talk about the, the affordable housing later on today, and we've got a strong partnership with the South Sound Housing Affordability Partnership where 15 jurisdictions have come together around affordable housing. Every jurisdiction knows that we need more, particularly for people like seniors and this and that. But we also have a number of partnerships, including in our human services area besides affordable housing. I think of our work on homelessness, where we partner in many ways with the city of Tacoma, with the city of Fife, with the city of Lakewood and Puyallup. Um, there's a whole host of those kind of things. I could go, could go on and on about these strong partnerships. And right now, obviously, we think a lot about the Department of Emergency Management. We are in storm and flood season, and that is one of the areas where we do a lot of work with our cities to coordinate emergency management plans and coordinate action. We're working closely with the city of Tacoma right now on a series of things managed through our emergency operations center. So we have a lot of good work that we do in partnership with the cities throughout Pierce County, including the fourth district, which has, I think, the, the least amount of unincorporated county of any, just a little teeny bit of unincorporated Pierce County. And I was, I was hoping that uh, Councilmember Herrera would be here because I was going to kind of conclude where I started, and that is one of the strong partnerships that we have in our country is a strong partnership between the Army and the Navy. And they work very well together, except for this Saturday when <laughs> Army and Navy play. Go Navy, beat Army. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> we'll let you take that executive privilege with that one. Do we have any questions for Executive Dammeyer this evening? Executive, thank you for being with us. Thank you. We really appreciate it. And we know our DE, our Department of Emergency Management personnel and Planning and Public Works personnel, as you just noted, are active, working really hard to keep communities safe and infrastructure safe and people's property and life safe. So. 
thank you so much for your leadership and um, for what the team is doing out right now as we speak. Section 7 is proclamations, recognitions, and awards. There are none this evening, and we don't have any ordinances or resolutions this evening. Um, we're really focused on sharing some major initiatives that the council has been involved in in partnerships. Uh, that's the real reason we're, we're here and to hear from you. So we're going to move to other business and announcements. And we're going to begin with um, a welcome from our hosts and, and an update about this South Tacoma Way Business District. I'd like to welcome to the podium Theory Real Estate Chief Executive Officer um, and Director of Theory Cares, Austin Miller, and his business partner and mom, uh, Rondi Miller, a, a great duo. Uh, before I um, ask you to welcome us and provide some words, I just want to first thank you for hosting us. Um, and thank you for joining the council for dinner b before this at one of these awesome establishments here in South Tacoma Way, Opal Lounge, just across the street. Um, and I, I, I told my colleagues uh, last week at our, at our meeting last week that uh, one of my activities this weekend was coming to South Tacoma Way to be at the Santa Parade on South Tacoma Way. And it was so much fun. Where we are right now here at Edison Square was the North Pole. And r right, right here in front of the stage was where Santa was greeting and hanging out with kids for hours uh, on Santa. And this whole place was buzzing with families. Um, cookie making and popcorn and hot chocolate. And uh, I think over a thousand people came through the North Pole. And South Tacoma Way was just magical uh, on Sunday. Thanks to your leadership and the leadership of others um, here in the South Tacoma Way Business District. So I would love to turn it over to you. Thank you. Well, thanks for supporting the Santa Parade, first of all. Um, thank you for sharing your potato skins at dinner earlier. Appreciate that. Uh, and thanks for inviting us to share tonight. Uh, you said 30 minutes, right? <laughs> um, well, my name is Austin Miller. This is my mother, Ronnie Miller. Uh, we are some of the owners of Theory Real Estate. We are a family business with a lot of love for Tacoma. Um, I grew up, I remember driving down South Tacoma Way, a very distinct memory. Uh, we would never stop, we'd never get out of the car, but I have a memory driving down South Tacoma Way and thinking that this neighborhood, this street had a very special vibe to it. And um, just remember, it had this kind of cool Western town feel to it that it still has today. Um, and today I'm gonna be sharing a little bit about South Tacoma Way. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, this is a neighborhood with a lot of history. Um, a century ago, it was a bustling neighborhood. This building we're standing in today was one of the first movie theaters in Tacoma. It sat up to 500 people. There was an ice cream shop next door. There was a J.C. Penney across the street. That was before the mall went in. Um, so this was a very lively neighborhood. Um, the, also, before I-5 was there, this was the main thoroughfare to get to Tacoma. Before this was part of Tacoma, it was actually called Edison, the neighborhood was, which is a big part of why we decided to name this venue Edison Square. Um, my family visited South Tacoma Way for the first time in 2017. We work in real estate, so we were uh, visiting a commercial property down here. And I'll be honest, this street, this neighborhood had a, a kind of a depressed feel to it. Um, if you walk down the street, almost every other building was sitting empty and um, abandoned and in rough shape. And we all uh, walked away that day with kind of a, an indescribable feeling that we were supposed to be part of this neighborhood and its revitalization and um, this community that was needing a little bit of love. Um, so th th flash forward to the next year and we walked through this building for the first time. I mentioned it was one of the first movie theaters in Tacoma. Um, after that it was a dance hall for many years, then it was a Chinese restaurant. Most recently it was a marijuana growing operation, so it had a great smell when we walked in for the first time. Uh, we walked in, there was a, a wall here down the middle, they had lowered the ceilings to 10 feet for some reason. Um, it, was in, it was in rough shape, but we walked up to the balcony and you could peek through a little window up there and you could see the original crown molding from the movie theater. And we all just had this, this feeling that we wanted to be part of this and um, help restore this building to its former glory. So we did just that over the next couple of years. Um, we had grand plans to open this building as an event venue in March of 2020. Turned out not to, not to be the best time to open an event venue. So uh, it sat here as a very expensive storage unit for about a year and a half. Uh, and then at the end of 2021, we had a grand opening, ribbon cutting with the mayor. We did a masquerade ball. Uh, it was a, a great celebration. Um, since then, this has been a venue that has hosted a, a very wide variety of events. We do everything from weddings to celebrations of life, 
Um, there's birthday parties, quinceañeras, corporate events. There's pro wrestling in here once a month. They set up a stage here in the middle. It's crazy. Uh, going into 2024, we have lots of other community events planned, uh, including a improv comedy show. There'll be a drag, a drag night once a month. Um, and lots of other events really just to bring the community together. Um, that's, that's our goal with this building and, and with a lot of the stuff we're doing down here in South Camboy. Um, outside of this building, uh, we've helped be part of the transformation of 20 buildings on the street between 52nd and 56th on South Camoe. Um, and it's, it's crazy. One of our main issues we're seeing nowadays is parking. There's not enough parking down here. We were begging people to come down here six years ago. Um, so it's, it's amazing to see the progress that's been made. Um, I also can't stand here, up here without acknowledging gentrification, which we know is a very real issue. Uh, the cost of living is going up around Tacoma, around Pierce County. Um, and our goal, our intention is not to push people away, but really to bring people to this neighborhood, um, help make it a safer and nicer place where people want to stay, they want to live, they want to move to. Um, so that's, that's our goal. We're, we're working on several initiatives. We're working on creating more affordable housing down here, which I'm excited to hear about later tonight. Uh, we opened a sober living house in partnership with the Tacoma Restaurant Mission, which is going great. Um, and then with the businesses that move down here, we are really uh, intentional to find uh, small local businesses, many of whom are minority-owned businesses, to fill our commercial spaces down here. Uh, some of these include Howdy Bagel, which you have, if you haven't been at Howdy Bagel yet, you got to check it out. Um, Intention Juice and Smoothie Bar, The Fern Sea, there's tons of great businesses coming to South Camboy. Um, outside of that, we have, uh, we have some co-working space. So there's Surge on the corner. Uh, there's some co-working space above Airport Tavern. There's over 100 small businesses, tattoo artists, barbers, that make a living right here in South Camboy. Um, so it's, it's amazing to see the growth. And um, there's, there's more to happen. There's more to come. Uh, going into 2024, our goal is really to continue this positive momentum and um, just make this a neighborhood that people that people want to come to, a destination for people in Tacoma and, and beyond. So thank you for the opportunity to share tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, Austin. Uh, Rondi, anything to share? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you keep up with him. <laughs> well, uh, great things are happening here in South Tacoma, South Tacoma Way in large part because of your investment and your energy and ability to bring people together and invite in new small businesses. Um, and things have been happening for some time and things don't happen overnight. It takes years and years of planning and growth and investment. And I, I want to acknowledge uh, two South Tacoma Way business district leaders who have had their business here on South Tacoma Way for a long time and have invested their energy in building the ecosystem of relationships in this business district and all the other small business districts in Tacoma. And that's Jim and Karen Rich, uh, who are here. Uh, it, it, do you mind standing and being recognized? <laughs> Great small business owners, uh, longtime Pierce County residents, and they put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into helping to keep business district associations vibrant and people connected and building relationship with each other. So. We're grateful to the leadership you provided so that folks like Austin and, and the, the team can, can really thrive. So thank you again for hosting us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, item number two um, is uh, the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act overview. Uh, one of the areas of focus that this council is um, really working hard on is the cost of living and in specific the cost of affordable housing and, and housing. Uh, we've put a lot of effort as a council in lots of different strategies into affordable housing. Uh, one of the initiatives this council has worked on uh, this year is um, what we call the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act. Um, Marine Howard, for those who may not have had the privilege to work with Marine, uh, Marine is uh, Marine Howard. Uh, we lost her at the beginning of this year to cancer. Um, Marine spent her life uh, fighting for social justice and fighting for housing affordability in particular, and making sure that uh, more people could have a have a, a safe, clean, affordable roof, roof over their head. So we named the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act after her and her memory and her decades of leadership. Um, I'd like to uh, invite to the podium John Barbie, Division Manager for um, Human Services, and Brian Schmid, uh, our Housing um, Unit Manager, 
uh, to share about the investment strategy of the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act. Mr. Barbie and Mr. Schmidt, welcome. Good evening, thank you. Uh, for the record, John Barbie, uh, Pierce County Human Services. I'm the division manager for community services. Department. I'm sorry, Did I, I, maybe I said the wrong title of the wrong division. No, you're, you're totally fine. <laughs> so, um, as you see up there, it says that Director Moss is gonna be here. She's actually um, sick today, unfortunately, so it's un very, very unaccustomed for her not to come, so that she's, she's out. But um, I'll turn it over really quickly to Brian, but I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity. Um, we have spent a lot of time um, on this plan. Um, it is in a draft form, so um, it's, it's, it's still a working document, and um, I'll let Brian go into the details of it, but I think what's really important is that I wanna stress that it's a draft form, because we're still out for public comment at this time, um, and as well as um, looking for feedback from, from members of the council. So Chair, thank you for having us tonight, and it's great to see everyone, and happy holidays. Thank, thank you, Mr. Barbie. Appreciate you being here. Um, the, the, the point of this presentation is for the public to learn more about this, and it is out for public comments. There are QR codes in the in the back of the room um, at the bar there, where there's no liquor, but it's, it's a bar. Uh, there, there's QR codes there where you can take that home and um, get online to make public comments. Mr. Schmidt. Good evening, Brian Schmidt with Pierce County Human Services and I supervise the affordable housing unit within our department. So thank you for having me tonight and this, giving me this opportunity to present our six year implementation and expenditure plan for the Marine Howard affordable housing tax dollars. So appreciate the invite. It's a really exciting time for us in human services and affordable housing. Um, currently we have 3,000 units in our pipeline. Those are income restricted affordable housing units that are in some form of development in Pierce County. Um, that is countywide. Of those 3,000 units, Pierce County governments invested in roughly half of those. And, and we were able to do that because of the investments that the county made two years ago um, with the American Rescue uh, Plan Act dollars. And those were invested in projects in 2021, 22, and 23. That's allowed, allowed us to build up a significant pipeline of affordable housing. We know, we know the need is significant and, and what we have in the pipeline isn't enough, but it's definitely a step forward from where we've been in the past. So um, appreciate the momentum that we've been building with affordable housing and, and implementing this uh, sales tax and, and getting this out to the community to develop additional affordable housing is exciting. So um, what, we, uh, what we presented today, and we can maybe go to the next slide, um, really was a collaboration um, with a lot of different of our partner organizations, the Pierce County Community De uh, Development Corporation, the Behavioral Health Advisory Board, and our Comprehensive Plan to End Homelessness uh, executive board and we also took this uh, and uh, went to a lot of different organizations which um, are listed in the plan which I won't uh, go go over tonight but um, we we took that plan and we developed really a framework um, for the implementation of the plan and we and we looked at um, the housing action strategy the comprehensive plan to end homelessness in a lot of different uh, areas that we thought were important to look at data when we went to go implement this plan and create a plan for, the, for implementing it. We wanted to maximize production of affordable housing for households that are with incomes below 60% of area median income. And we're throwing around 60, 30% area median income. They're actually in the plan, you can go in and there is an appendix to the plan that has a chart and you can see the income levels. Um, so when we talk about area median income, it's a little nebulous of what that actually means, but you can see the chart. We have a huge shortage of affordable housing and we, we wanna maximize the production of affordable housing. That really is an overarching framework for this plan. We wanna maximize it for 60%. For extremely low income households at 30% of area median income and below. We also don't want to forget about existing affordable housing. Um, we have a significant stock of current affordable, affordable housing. We don't want to let that go into disrepair or uh, have affordability periods expire, so we want to keep in mind that we don't want to develop 
hundreds of units of affordable housing and then lose hundreds of units of affordable housing um, because we're not paying attention to preserving those. We also want to address uh, racial equity in housing and also address geographic equity in housing. I will say that um, a majority of our income restricted affordable housing is centered in the city of Tacoma and we would like to look at expanding out out into the county and getting it more affordable housing in, in more diverse locations within Pierce County. Let me go to the next slide. One of the first things we did uh, when we were developing this plan was look at what existing resources does Pierce County have to deploy. Um, we looked at what do we have for affordable housing. We have uh, HUD, HUD funds that have come into the county from the home program. We have document recording fee revenue that comes in. And then in 2019, we had the 1406 affordable housing sales tax that was passed. That is a def that's not a new tax, that is a deferral of state uh, tax revenue that the county is allowed to keep and deploy for affordable housing. Um, those, fun those funding sources have anywhere from an income cap to 80% of area median income to 60% to 50%. Um, we'll go into the details of that tonight, but um, around $4.3 million is the, is the annual revenue that is received um, from the, those existing funding sources. With $4.3 million, we can generate around 90 affordable housing units per year. That's based on a, a $50,000 per unit investment that the county makes to get one affordable housing unit. So when we talk about county investments in affordable housing, those dollars are leveraged with other resources that come in, mainly public resources, but also private debt, things like low-income housing tax credits, state housing trust funds, um, and other HUD funds that potentially could come in directly from HUD. So um, about a seven to one ratio is what it is. So for every dollar that the county invests in affordable housing, another seven dollars comes in from an outside source. So we think with the existing uh, revenue that comes in, it's around 90 units per year that, that can be developed. So one of the findings was we do need additional resources in Pierce County if we want to develop more affordable housing units. And those dollars have to go towards capital investments in affordable housing development. We also uh, looked at what does it cost to operate affordable housing. Affordable housing means that the, the rents that are charged are below market. So if a household is below 60% of median or 30% of median, they're charged rent based on what their income is. So the amount of rental revenue that uh, can be collected is far less than it would be in a market rate project. What that means is if those units are not subsidized, often operating subsidies are needed to run the building, operating and maintenance costs. For units um, serving tenants that are between 60% and 30% of area median income, typically those projects can self-sustain on the rental revenue that comes in. Projects that are serving extremely low income tenants at below 30% of area median income those are the projects that need additional operating support. So we do propose in the plan some of the revenue um, that comes in to be used for operating and maintenance of affordable housing projects. Um, we also, um, and I know there's some things in the, in the, the new budget coming up that address this as well. Um, we want to look at getting some funding for strategic acquisitions of affordable housing and locations that are advantageous, advantageous for affordable housing and um, in various geographic locations without the county. And in other words, we don't want to concentrate affordable housing in certain areas of the county. So that means we want to be a little more proactive instead of reactive. Um, our affordable housing funding has historically been operated and still will be. Um, we put out uh, an application, a notice of fund availability we say, here's the amount of money we have available, um, here's the eligible projects, come, come, come to us with applications and, and developers come to us with applications. A, a little more strategic uh, approach would be to use some dollars 
to go out and actually look for properties that we may want to acquire for, for development. And those projects would not be developed by the county. They would be developed by private developers or nonprofits. But taking a little more proactive approach can help us spread uh, affordable housing more throughout the county. So um, we also, uh, in our findings, um, looked at if we want to serve or develop projects for tenants that are extremely low income, those projects are projects that serve at risk of homelessness or could also be permanent supportive housing units. So if we really want to address homelessness and move folks from non-congregate shelters or shelters into permanent housing, we need to expand permanent supportive housing. And in order to do that, additional supports are needed to help operate those projects and provide services for those tenants. We can go to the next slide. One of the guiding documents that we used um, in developing this plan is the housing action strategy that was um, adopted by Pierce County, I believe in November of 2022. Um, that housing action strategy listed quite a few things, and, and that data was based on HUD, um, HUD data, the American Community Survey data, which often lags a little bit behind what the current market is doing. But as we all know, housing costs are rising faster than incomes. Uh, what we found is one third of all households in Pierce County are cost burdened. Um, that means cost burden means they pay more than 30% of their income um, for housing costs. Severely cost burden is paying more than 50% of income for housing costs. And there are quite a few households that are low, very low and extremely low income that are paying more than 50% of their income for housing costs. The greatest need for, ho for affordable housing was in the lowest income bands. And what's happening in the market because purchasing a, so a home is so difficult with housing prices, interest rates, um, we have a down renting effect going on, which um, means that households that normally would have purchased a home are now renting in the rental market and occupying rental units that normally would have been rented by folks that are in lower income bands. And so it's creating a ripple effect through the market. And go to the next slide. We need 56,000 new units of affordable housing in the next. 21 years, um, and that's just for households that are at or below 50% of area median income. There's a significant need above that income band as well. But really what these dollars do is address the housing shortage in the 60, 50, and 30% of AMI area median income income bands. We want to use all resources we can to address the need at all levels, but public subsidies really are what are needed when when you're looking to develop affordable housing to the very lowest income households. A little bit about the uh, point in time count data and we're getting ready um, to embark on the next point in time count here uh, in a month or so. Um, but from 2023, uh, we had 2,100 uh, homeless uh, unsheltered. Um, 6,500 people were connected to the homeless crisis response system. And really, the comprehensive plan to, uh, and I mentioned it a little earlier, the comprehensive plan to end homelessness really calls for permanent housing for unsheltered households to be able to move into. We can't address homelessness without housing, without additional housing. We can go to the next slide. So the expenditure plan, um, we are looking at using the project cost, 80% of those costs, and this follows the ordinance that was passed, 80% um, would be used for affordable housing capital. Um, in total of the program costs, 50% of those funds would be earmarked to serve projects that served households that are between 60 and 30% of area median income. 30% would be set aside to serve households that are extremely low income in the 30% of AMI income ban. And we would take 20% of the dollars to support the housing related services, and that would be to support homeless housing units, permanent supportive housing units, 
that require ongoing supports to continue operations. Right now, and, and our homeless team has a lot more information on this, but we're at capacity um, with what the resources we have could support our current existing permanent supportive housing system. If we want to expand permanent supportive housing, additional resources are needed to support that, um, to support those supportive services. We'll go to the next slide. Um, program administration, um, that would be salaries and benefits of staff, um, some department overhead, uh, indirect expenses, and um, mentioned a uh, housing equity plan. Um, really briefly on that, the uh, HUD and, uh, is going to be publishing, and they published a preliminary rule on it, but it's an affirmatively furthering fair housing um, act. And as a recipient of our federal um, formula grants, the HOME program, the Community Development Block Grant program, the Emergency Solutions Grant, we will be required to comply with that rule. And part of that is going to be uh, creating a housing equity plan. That equity plan will uh, be intended to address historic segregation, um, racial inequities, and we're looking forward to, to getting the final rule from HUD, understanding what the requirements are, and moving forward with getting that plan started. Um, we have additional expenditures that, that were from the 2023 uh, NOFA waitlist. I understand that we may have additional discussion that we need, may need to have about that. Um, program administration as well, I think we're still working on exactly what that looks like. Um, the 10% is consistent with some of our other housing programs that we have, such as HOME, such as the 1406, but we, I think we have a little more work to do um, to kind of tease that out a little bit. We can go to the next slide. So here is an outline of the six-year plan. Um, the revenue projections we got from our finance department, as you can see, there's, some, there's uh, escalating revenue over the next um, six years. In 2029, we project the fund would be all the way up to almost a little over $23,000. Million. Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bad eyes. So this is all, um, so you can see capital expenditures, um, homeless services. Um, we're not proposing to, to start the O&M. The O&M is for new projects, and we don't suspect that those new projects that are funded with these dollars would start be placed in service until probably 2027. So we're going to hold off on allocating any O&M to projects until they're actually up and going. We can go to the next slide. The next slide is, this is our um, list of projects that are on the wait list from our last notice of funds availability. Um, mentioned earlier that the county puts out an annual notice of funds availability for affordable housing projects. And um, we didn't have enough money to fund all the projects. We got about $30 million in asks. We had about $6 million available. Um, we were able to use some fund balance from some um, accrued revenue that came in, um, but we did not have enough money to fund all the projects. The projects you're seeing here were fully vetted, fully underwritten, scored, deemed um, worthy of funding. We just didn't have the resources to be able to fund these projects. You can go to the next slide. So our overarching uh, funding priorities are uh, community connections and engagement, um, extremely low income and supportive housing, geographic equity in affordable housing. We really want to leverage these dollars to the maximum. We want to gain as many units as we can with these resources. We want to get all, any and all leverage to get the maximum benefit for the community. So we want to leverage private and public investments. Um, we want to address, uh, address racial equity. We want to promote transit-oriented development. And we really want to expand um, and have a sustainable permanent supportive housing system. So uh, households that are exiting homelessness have a place to go. I mentioned earlier that costs about $50,000 to develop one unit of affordable housing. So we put together what we think is a pretty realistic target goals for these funds. 
and we based it the capital investments of fifty thousand dollars of a county funds per unit for and that's how we base those projections which you'll see on the next slide and again mentioned earlier that for every county dollar invested seven dollars of other funds are leveraged so we can go to the next slide and look at our target goals so our projection is 1,700 new units of affordable housing in the next six years. Um, $83 million of uh, county funds would produce 16, 1,680 affordable housing, new affordable housing units in Pierce County. And I don't have the math well in my head, but um, $7 in addition to that would be 550,000 of additional dollars brought into the community to leverage those dollars so sorry my map my brain's not working on the math right now so uh, we can go to the next slide so permanent supportive housing goals uh, we went and looked at our current system and for site-based permanent supportive housing that's where a nonprofit would own the housing and they rent it to uh, tenants and provide services those cost about twelve thousand per year to operate a leasing model where a nonprofit goes out and leases a, a unit from a private landlord and also provides the services is about twenty thousand um, dollars per unit per per year and again the funding supports ongoing supportive service and operations costs and and much like our to a lesser extent our uh, homeless housing dollars are matched with other outside sources as well. What you're looking at is the per, uh, permanent supportive housing target goals. Um, this is what we think we can expand our permanent supportive housing supply in the next six years. And if we're looking at site-based permanent supportive housing, we think we can expand the supply of permanent supportive housing by 425 units. And that is, did a, did a little bit more extensive presentation uh, a couple days ago, but uh, happy to take questions um, from council or, or anybody. Well, thank you, Mr. Schmid, very much. Uh, this was really designed to help the community understand the opportunity in front of us with the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act and what we could do with these dollars. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, in Chair Hitchens Committee and our Health and Human Services Committee just earlier this week, we had a little bit longer version of, of this presentation and the council really got to spend about two hours uh, with the department and asking a lot of questions and drilling into the detail of the plan. So we've had our opportunity, but let me see if my colleagues have any other questions or comments at this time. This is a, I know this is a really important topic of ours. Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Um, just for the audience sake, when we talk about permanent supportive housing, who, who is being supported? What's the, who are we looking to support in this housing? I'll call on my colleague, Mr. Barbie, to take that one. It's always good to be able to phone a friend. That's, right. That's the phone a friend. Thanks. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councilmember Hitchin, for the question. So when we, when we talk about permanent supportive housing, we're talking about um, people who are chronically homeless, and that's defined as someone who's had um, extensive period of homelessness has a, dis, uh, a, dis, a documented disability. Um, so we'll require, and so we'll have some type of potential fixed income or no income. Um, and then permanent supportive housing, that provides wraparound case management services for the client or the household unit. And those services could be everything from working on vital documents, working on increased employability if they're able, uh, eligible to work, in, increased income, maybe even having them sign up for services. Um, maybe that include health care benefits, those types of things. So a lot of the life skills and some of the soft skills that are um, developed through wraparound services and case management. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Councilmember Kruver and then Councilmember Denson. Thank, thank you, Chair. When you were mentioning on geographic equity, is that still including areas that are basically closer to jobs, services, and transit? Yes. Um, about 75% of our income-restricted affordable housing is located within the city of Tacoma. Um, <clears throat> yes, we're looking at geographic equity around the county in areas that do have transit, um, in areas of opportunity, um, outside the city, unincorporated, other incorporated cities and towns um, within Pierce County, um, looking to spread 
spread those units, you know, countywide. When you say areas of opportunity, is, is that got a definition aside from what I mentioned? Area of, there's, there's different mapping that you can look at. Um, health, health equity indexes and areas that have better health outcomes than others. Um, there's mapping tools that you can use. So it's, it's essentially an area that has better health outcomes, better, better opportunities for folks, better transit opportunities, things of that nature. Okay, thank you. Thank sure. you. Thank you, Councilmember Gruber. Councilmember Dinson. Yes, thank you, Mr. Schmid. Um, I have a question about the 2023 NOFO wait list. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's actually just about the finances, not about the projects themselves. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we started collecting this tax this year, correct? correct. Mm -hmm. And these four projects would total a little over 10 million. Mm -hmm. Would they be funded out of the proceeds this year? Or are we going to be eating into next year's proceeds? I'm just wondering what the opportunity will be in 2024 for new projects to apply for this funding. So those projects would be looking for funding in 2024 or beyond that. Um, some of them are, are a little further along. It would probably close on financing and, and expend dollars in 2024. Others may, may take a little longer than that. Um, so what we're looking at is 2024 funds. The, the projects that we're gonna put out in the, for, for funding in 2024, so we would do a notice of fund, funding availability. We, we put that out to the community. Um, we probably will do that in, in March, April. Um, we would get applications and proposals back in June 2024, and, and we would have awards and, and a, a set of recommendations for the executive and the council um, sometime in August or September. Those projects are not gonna spend until 2025 at, at the earliest. Um, so really what we're looking at is a lag and, and fund balance accruing over the next year until we get to 2025. And even the projects that are awarded dollars in 2024 may not spend until 26 or even a little longer than that. Um, okay. So we, do, we will have a fund balance that's gonna be accruing. Okay, thank you, perfect, thank sure. you. Thank you for those questions. Um, there were two projects that the council authorized spending on off the top when we first adopted the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act so we could get shovels in the ground and yeah. the roofs over people's heads quick, quickly. Uh, could you briefly explain the two projects that are actively being uh, built? I sure can. Um, one of them is called Copper Way. It's being developed by the Inland Group. Um, if any of you go out towards, like I do, um, out Mountain Highway, past the Roy Y, up towards 224th and Mountain Highway. Um, you see uh, project development on the right side as you're going south. That is the Copper Way Apartments. That is 256 units of uh, house, affordable housing for uh, households that are at or below 60% of area median income and below. Um, that project is really coming along. Um, I think a lot of the buildings are already done. So we, we put that investment in, I believe we closed on financing in May, um, and they're really, really chugging along there. Um, the other project is a project called Viridian Gardens. Um, we're hoping to close on financing on that one in March or April. Um, that is being done by Southport Financial, um, their group. Both of these are private developers that specialize in affordable housing. They use um, what's called low-income housing tax credits. Um, and we'll get into the vernaculars of that, but basically what it allows, it allows is for investors to invest in affordable housing in exchange for federal income tax reduction or credit. Generates a significant amount of equity that allow a 256 unit apartment complex to be constructed with some private debt and some local resources. So excited about um, both of those projects and I, I get to drive by the one almost every day. So I'm really excited to see that one go up. The, um, the Viridian Gardens, that one's gonna get, get going here in 2024. We're excited about that one too. I, I believe that one is a close to 100 units of affordable housing for, for families and households that are below the 60% of area median income threshold. So excited about both of those projects. Fantastic. Um, any other questions by any other members? 
There's a lot more on the website associated with the plan. There's a lot of detail there. For, uh, there's a lot of housing wonks in the audience and at home who I know are really interested in what this is gonna do for our community. One other just high level policy point in the proposed plan is you know, one of the choice points is how long, for, for the, in exchange for the public dollars, mm -hmm. how long uh, do we ensure that the units remain affordable at a minimum? And a lot of public projects in Washington State have historically made a minimum of a 30-year restriction, a 30-year commitment that the units remain affordable at a minimum. This plan proposes that at a minimum, it be a 50-year restriction. Is, can correct. you confirm that, Mr. Schmidt? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So the, there's lots of that, that's one of the many policy choice points in the investment strategy. How we how we propose to invest these dollars? What mix of units for whom, where, how do you leverage? So these are all choice points, right? So this is what we're looking for public comment on. Um, uh, the council will continue to uh, weigh in and, and ad adopt the plan after after we get more public input. So public input, I believe, closes on December 15th mm -hmm. on this yeah. draft plan. Again, there's QR codes in the back to link to the plan and the website to collect uh, information, uh, public input. We'll, we'll, at, at the very end of this evening, we'll receive public input on, on anything, um, including this, um, and folks can think about their comments and send them over the, the, the web survey that we have designed. Mr. Schmidt, thank you again for explaining this to us and for the hard work in working with so many different stakeholders to give us a draft plan for the council and the community to react to. Thank you. I want to note for the record that Councilmember Herrera has joined us online through the magic of technology. Councilmember Herrera, are you able to, he, can you hear us, Mr. Winesbury? He can hear us, but we, but we can't hear him. We promise he's there. That brings us to, that brings us to item number three. Um, and uh, I, I'd like to, I would love to uh, uh, bring to the podium um, the mayor of this great city, uh, Mayor Woodards, Mayor Victoria Woodards, um, mayor of the city of Tacoma, to further uh, welcome us and offer some uh, thoughts and remarks about partnership before, and who, the deputy mayor of Tacoma is gonna join her for the presentation. But be, before I do that, Mayor, if I could, um, I just wanna recognize a couple of other yep. uh, elected officials who have joined us. We have Councilmember Bush, I know you were gonna do this, you're a pro exactly. at this. Uh, <laughs> Councilmember Bushnell, who represents uh, South Tacoma, is with us from the city of Tacoma, uh, and Parks Commissioner Rosie Ayala is here, who uh, represents citywide, the Metro Parks Tacoma Board of Park Commissioners. Are there any other elected officials that I've missed that are here. The executive already got to give executive comments. Well, thank you for making time uh, to be with us. Mayor Woodard, uh, you have an incredibly bu busy schedule. Thank you for making time to be with us. My honor to be here this evening. I wasn't scheduled to be here, so it is a blessing to have great people like my deputy mayor, Christina Walker, um, who is who's here tonight to make the presentation. But when my schedule changed and I could be here, I thought it made a lot of sense for me to attend my own district meeting. Um, and I think this might be for me the first time that both of my council members have been in the same place. And so tonight, I am here not just as the mayor, but more so a constituent who lives um, in this district and in this neighborhood. And I'm so glad to see you in this beautiful build building. I had the honor of being here to cut the ribbon when we opened this building. Um, and just being here um, with you, um, Chair Mello, on Sunday for the Santa Parade and just all of the incredible businesses that were represented um, and the kids and the families that were here were just amazing. So I really want to thank the owners of this building for the service that they're providing to this incredible community. Um, Santa told me that he has a plan that this will be the biggest Santa parade in the world. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm with Santa right down South Tacoma Way. So we might be starting in Tacoma, but who knows? One day we'll end up in Lakewood or, or beyond. So really it is an honor to be here tonight um, and honor to have you here. I know that you have a very large district, Chair Mello, but glad that you decided to pick this part of your district this evening. 
Um, we are um, going to be here this evening talking about several issues that we all share in common, from homelessness to youth violence, affordable housing, um, climate change, and therapeutic court. And so Deputy Mayor has done a great job of preparing for this meeting, so I don't want to steal any of her thunder, but I thought that I should at least get, get up and make opening remarks um, since I am the mayor of this great city and we have an honor of hosting you this evening. So I will turn it over to our Deputy Mayor and I'll come back and make some comments at the very end. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mayor Woodard. Deputy Mayor Walker, thank you for making time to be with us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, as we were preparing remarks for tonight and you asked us to talk about uh, collaborations, uh, we could be here for hours. I mean, there truly are so many things that we are doing and things that we're going to do together that are so, so important to the people of our community. So um, I'm gonna try to keep it um, brief. Uh, the mayor mentioned we just have five quick topics, easy, right? Um, <laughs> but you all have talked a lot about affordable housing, so we won't um, dive into a ton of detail, but I am so thankful for all the partnership we've had in my short time on council, and I know there's just gonna be more and more. So um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, so working to address homelessness, so um, obviously this is a shared priority for all of us and it's a huge need in all of our communities. Um, we had a joint meeting, as you all know, in September, which I believe was a bit historic or at least in, it uh, has not happened in a very long time. It was really, really great to sit together with all of you at the dais um, at the city of Tacoma to talk about how we address homelessness. Um, and to align our efforts. Um, and we're really excited about how we work together. We obviously can't do this alone. Um, no, no one jurisdiction can. So we're really excited about the new Pierce County Select Committee on Homelessness. And I know my colleagues are excited to join that work. Um, we at the City of Tacoma allocated $35.7 million uh, for homelessness services and programs in this biennium. Um, and amazing things are happening. Our staff are doing great work, but we know that it is not enough. And so we're gonna continue working on that and working with communities. Um, we're providing short-term assistance, as you know, temporary shelters, um, but we're all, also working on those long-term solutions, uh, making sure we are expanding housing affordability as you all are. Um, we did about an over, uh, just over a year ago, um, adopt our camping ordinance um, that uh, bans camping around um, those shelters that we have spent time and worked with community to uh, put in community, and as well as within our waterways to protect the health and health of our environment. And um, what that ordinance has helped us do is it's really enabled our homeless engagement alternative liaisons, our HEAL team, um, to connect with more than um, 2,500 people this year and to make ensure that 200 of those individuals have actually found housing. So um, we have expanded that team, done a ton of work, and been able to do that in a compassionate way across uh, the city of Tacoma. So um, much more to come on that, and I know you all are diving in um, regularly on that, that issue as well. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, this is, uh, I wanna talk about youth violence prevention. Um, and again, we all have been at the table working on this work. Um, I wanna thank and recognize the mayor for pulling us all together at the start of this year. At, unfortunately, a time when we were seeing a lot of youth violence. Um, but uh, the mayor pulled us together. It was much more than the uh, county and the city, but um, jurisdictions and agencies across um, all of our communities to address um, especially gun-related youth violence. Um, and through much conversation um, and much work and um, elevating existing work, elevating existing nonprofits, um, we pulled together the summer late nights. I know you're all gonna get a, a detailed presentation on that, but I did wanna highlight the work that we did in um, collaboration to make that happen, and especially some of the work that we did, um, Council Member Mello, um, had a great idea to go out into the community to um, doorbell and to reach families to make sure they knew about these summer late nights. And I know um, all of you joined us to do that among leadership at um, other governments and other um, agencies. And we, we know that we reached uh, people in community where they were at to let them know about this. The sites that we doorbelled around had the highest attendance. Um, so that was a, a really important um, co collaborative piece of work that was really impactful for the community. Um, we did a, a bring together uh, also at um, JMAC, which is the Joint Municipal Action Committee, um, 
Chair Mello is the vice chair. Um, I chair that group this year. And um, this is one of our top issues around that table as well. Um, again, not uh, just the city and the county, uh, many jurisdictions there as well, Metro Parks, Tacoma Public Schools, the Port of Tacoma, Puyallup Tribe, also representatives from the Health Department and Pierce Transit, working together on many, many issues, but uh, summer late nights being a huge one of those. I also want to recognize Council Member Jane Hitchin um, for the work that I know she's doing in spreading this uh, throughout the county so that it's not just Tacoma. Um, I have been so inspired by the work that we've all done together, and I know um, this year was just the start of that. Um, I also want to mention um, a new committee that has come out of that work, both with the Mayor's uh, Collaborative Group and, the, and JMAC, is the Youth and Young Adult Violence Reduction Committee. Um, and that uh, group will meet uh, in perpetuity to really address youth violence, make sure we're connecting with those um, violence-based, community-based violence intervention groups in our community that are already doing that great work. So, so your um, council and our council can fund the great work that's already happening. All right, we can move on to the next um, slide. So climate issues, obviously a uh, issue that does not stop at um, either city borders or county borders, and so collaborative work is essential um, in how we address this. And, and we all know, um, you know, between wildfires and flooding, um, we are truly in a climate emergency. And so um, have done a lot of work uh, working together. Uh, I, I know you're all familiar with the Climate Action Plan that the City of Tacoma hosts. Um, and working together um, on planning programs and strategies across the county. Um, we just, I'm really proud of the work that we did um, in two, uh, 2021 around decarbonization, sort of set the stage. We've just finished the first phase of, phase of our study, so we're starting that implementation piece, um, hoping that that will also be a model for other jurisdictions um, across the, the county. Um, and you all uh, know that I am a big advocate for multimodal transportation, obviously a huge part of climate solutions, um, and uh, serve on both the Pierce Transit and the Sound Transit boards. Again, issues that are truly regional and truly collaborative, um, and we can't do it without each other. So we'll continue that work. Um, I want to also recognize um, Chair Mello's work in bringing together the, um, our, our climate collaborative, uh, and I know it has a different and fancier name than that, but bringing together people around the county um, around climate issues. It, we hadn't um, sat down to um, in, a, in a formal setting before, and I, that is so, so valuable um, that we're touching every part of this county with that climate work. So thank you for your leadership on that. I know it's um, sort of just getting started, but already, uh, is making a difference. Um, all right, next slide. So therapeutic courts, I know this is uh, something that the county has been doing for longer than the city. We are very excited about this work. I had the opportunity in the past year to travel with staff um, to visit a number of therapeutic and community courts across the state. Um, truly life-changing for the people that engage and I think game-changing for our communities. And so um, the work that we're going to do together um, with the, um, the county and the Tacoma Municipal Court around supporting people, um, addressing the root causes of the things that lead them to interact with our courts, um, making sure, I, I know you all host a resource center supporting the courts, and that's an important and vital piece of that. Um, these are, I think this represents uh, part of our community safety and public safety that is really vital um, outside of just the enforcement piece that is um, essential and again knows no boundaries, right? So it's not a, at the city line or the county line where folks are committing crimes but need that help and support. So I'm really excited that we're joining you in those efforts and um, much to come in the new year. If you haven't done a tour um, of the courts, I know um, Judge uh, Sontag has offered that to the public and to any elected official that wants to do that. Okay, next slide. Um, I will be really brief on affordable housing and development because I know you've uh, just heard a lot about it. Um, we know our city is growing. Um, it is really important um, for us to welcome that growth, but also be really thoughtful and really strategic about it. Um, we are in the midst of our um, home in Tacoma process where we're updating our zoning and many, many pieces that touch um, housing decisions, housing choices for all of our residents. 
And we want to make sure we do that in an equitable way. We want to make sure we do that in a predictable way. And um, we also uh, have a affordable housing action strategy, as I'm sure you know. Um, Home in Tacoma is a vital part of that. So we are always have an eye on the affordable housing piece of any, um, any housing choices in Tacoma. And I'm really proud of the work that we're going to be rolling out in the next month around anti-displacement and the strategies um, around making sure that the residents who are here can still afford to be here. Um, and thank you for your leadership on the Marine Howard Affordable Housing um, Act. It's really exciting to see how much of a difference you all are going to make uh, in, in um, our communities. Um, so I will turn it to the last slide um, and, and just close a little bit. Uh, very, I love this photo that shows us all uh, together at, as I mentioned, the meeting in September this year. Um, as we develop uh, that partnership around um, addressing homelessness. Um, but I think this is an indication of what's to come, the work that we're doing at the Joint Municipal Action Committee, the climate cohort. Um, we're investing in those partnerships. I believe in them so strongly. I don't think we do good work in silos, whether that's between departments or with other agencies. And so I know that um, we are just on the the start of some, some really great work going forward. So thanks again for having me. Thanks for coming to Tacoma. Um, and I'll turn it back over to the mayor for closing remarks. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walker, so much. Thank you, Deputy, um, Deputy Mayor, for that great presentation. I just, there are just a couple things I just want to add to her presentation. Um, number one is we talk about collaboration, what partnerships really look like. Um, affordable housing is, is an issue that we all have, whether you live in the city of Tacoma, in the county, in Lakewood, wherever you live. Um, I would almost say in the United States, there is an issue around affordable housing. And so I'm so great when we talk about partnerships that we don't have to look very far to see how that actually works. Um, tonight, I know that I see in the audience uh, Jason Gautier, who is here with us, who actually is the executive director that we hired to run SHAPE. Um, and SHAPE is a collaboration that started with myself and the county executive and former council member Connie Ladenberg and then council member Ryan Mello jumped right in, no questions asked, and we moved that forward. And what's so great about that is it's, it's, it's a partnership amongst the entire county. I'm a firm believer that Tacoma may be the county seat and may be the largest city in the county, but what happens outside of Tacoma almost is more important sometimes than what happens inside Tacoma. If we can make sure that all of our cities and towns have the support they need to grow and to have affordable housing to take care of homelessness and other issues, then our county is stronger in the end. And I think that's all that all of us want. That's why we signed up to take these jobs. Um, and that's why we do the work that we do. It obviously is not for the great pay. It is not for the thanks that we get every time we go somewhere. <laughs> but it truly is that we either saw something that was wrong and we wanted to make it right, or we saw something that was happening that was good and we wanted more of it. So we all signed up to do better. We signed up to do that work because of the people who sit here in this audience today. And so the more that we can work together, the more that we can work to strengthen every city and town in Pierce County, then the stronger all of us will be because of that. And it comes through programs like SHAPE and the others that the deputy mayor has mentioned that make that happen. Now, as I take my seat, I know that it's the next thing on the agenda, but, but I'll let you introduce it, Chair Mello, because I was gonna ask you, agenda. I was gonna put you on the spot to oh do it, God. and I didn't prepare you for this. <laughs> I don't need any script for this one. Um, it truly is an honor tonight that's to see um, that you've invited um, the Youth Commission of Tacoma, and dare I say with much great pride, and they chose the name, the Mayor's Youth Commission in Tacoma. Um, when I got elected as mayor, one of the things I heard from a young woman on the campaign trail was, you know, I'm 12, 13 years old. Where's my place to talk about the future of my city? I said, you know, you're right. And she said, too often when people want to talk about youth, they want to talk to people in college and they think that's young. But truly our young people, even under the age of 18, are very wise and have lots to say about what they want their city to look like right now or their county to look like. Right now, we as the adults who are old enough to hold these positions are in charge. But the reality is, is that we need to be listening to our young people so that they inherit something they actually want and something that they actually need. And so I'm just really grateful to you that you invited the Mayor's Youth Commission to be here tonight to present to you. And I'm gonna ask Ashley, who is the chair of the Mayor's Youth Commission, to step forward to make 
her presentation. Ashley, come on forward. Thank you, Mayor Woodards. Thank, thank you, Deputy Mayor Walker. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor Woodards, and thank you, Council uh, Chair Mello. Um, I'll start off with just an introduction. I'm Ashley Brewster. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the chair of the Mayor's Youth Commission of Tacoma. Um, just so that everyone knows, um, I'm here to present a little bit about what we have been up to recently, to give an update about our progress, and to share what we are for anyone who does not know. As, um, as Mayor Woodards mentioned, um, the uh, Mayor's Youth Commission of Tacoma has been around since um, 2019 um, when Mayor Woodards and a youth in Tacoma, for anyone who knows of Stella Keating, she is who uh, Mayor Woodards was mentioning, uh, came together and created the Mayor's Youth Commission of Tacoma along with youth in the community because from the very beginning of the commission, the highest priority has been that the structure of the commission and what we focus on is actually driven by what people under the age that normally has the power in our communities needs and wants to focus on. So for um, just for clarification purposes, um, the city of Tacoma um, states that the Mayor's Youth Commission of Tacoma is meant to advise on policies codes, plans, and practices through a youth lens, providing an opportunity to engage in policy-making decisions in local government. In addition to this, MYCT organizes community events and projects. What this means is that MYCT is Tacoma's major method of civic engagement for all middle and high school students across the city. To understand the signific significance of this widespread group, in July 2022, census.gov reported that 20.7% of the population of Tacoma is represented by people under the age of 18. So this is a vast group of people that is often underrepresented. Next slide, please. Knowing that this vast portion of the population is often ignored in government and policy, um, the Mayor's Youth Commission of Tacoma was created. Um, for anyone who um, is curious about that creation, it's Tacoma Resolution 40502. Um, it's interesting to learn more about that. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really focused, and it has been since day one, on what the youth in Tacoma see as a priority and the issues that we see facing our community. That is why it has been um, up to the commission what we focus on and how we structure ourselves. So we are currently broken into four committees, and we have been since we started. All, all four of those committees were decided upon and split into um, at the decision of the commission. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, um, we have four committees. Each of these committees is led by a committee chair and vice chair, and all of these committees are coordinated by the commission chair, myself, and the commission vice chair. Our committees are as follows. Justice and Safety, Social Health, Environmental Health, and Education, Arts, and Culture. Now, these committees are focused and very flexible dependent on the needs at the time. So our projects have changed throughout the years since we were created based on the pressing matters of what we are currently seeing rather than uh, limiting our projects to one very specific um, project or goal over time. Instead, we are flexible based on the needs of our community. Next slide, please. Some of those um, projects that we have worked on um, are as follows. And this is just a sample, a selection of them, not a fully encompassing list. Um, the commission has organized and um, planned the Charting Our Futures Youth Summit. Next slide, please. Um, which is a subset of the overall Charting Our Futures conference. Next slide, please. We've created advisory letters to city council and state government on pressing issues, um, such as endorsing the recently passed Tacoma, or Tenant Bill of Rights. Next slide, please. Partnering with local organizations, such as Tacoma for All, which um, is the organization that spearheaded the Tacoma um, Tenant Bill of Rights. And we are currently working on 
expanding a um, budding partnership with Amara, which is a youth organization that I will talk about um, towards the end of my presentation. Next slide, please. We've also organized the Tacoma Youth Art Zine, which is an opportunity for Tacoma youth throughout the city to share their art and not only share their art and get their name out, but share about issues that face them. So we had a combination of visual art that was focused on um, social issues and a visual art that was focused on um, the art itself, along with poetry and other forms of art put into this zine. Next slide, please. We've also organized closing swaps. This is another one that we are planning to continue into the future and do more of. The great opportunity for youth throughout the city to come together, have a sense of community where they can connect with others, and it's an opportunity um, to share clothing so that it doesn't go to waste and so that people who do not have access to um, buy new clothes can get access to them. Next slide, please. Another event that we've organized are street cleanups, um, and this is just a way for us to use our power um, to make change in the community because boots on the ground and shovels are how you make change, um, and we need the overall large, um, large scale legislation change, and we also need that boots on the ground change. So, this is one way that we've addressed that. Next slide, please. And we've also organized youth socials, um, a way for um, teens around the community to connect, similar to the um, summer late nights that were mentioned earlier. This is a way for teens around Tacoma to get to know each other and build those relationships in, um, in ways that often is not provided in our day-to-day -day life in schools or extracurriculars, devoted to just socializing and um, connecting about issues that we see facing our community. Next slide, please. That was a sample of some of our previous projects, and now I'm going to talk about some of our current projects, um, and I'm excited about these ones because this is where we get to see um, big ideas for the future and plan ahead more. Um, so current projects that we're working on include next year's um, Charting Our Futures Youth Summit. Um, this one is super exciting to be um, building off of and learning from what we've had in previous years to hopefully make this year the best um, youth summit we've had. Another um, project that we're working on right now is um, organizing a food and clothing drive through Tacoma schools um, and hopefully beyond, beyond. We're getting details for that squared away um, this week. Um, next slide, please. In addition to continuing our current and past projects, looking into the future, the commission is planning a few brand new ideas. A couple projects of, or a couple example of, examples of this are the budding partnership with Amara that I mentioned previously. Amara is an organization devoted to um, youth support, especially when it comes to foster care, which is a massive, um, massive need in our community to support, um, support. Uh, youth around the city um, in many ways other than just the ones that are often addressed, foster care being a really important aspect of that. So that's a really exciting partnership that um, we are looking forward to expanding. Another um, thing that we are currently working on is a potential future news article featuring NYCT um, to uh, look for more connections in our community and raise awareness for what we do. Um, the reason this is exciting is because it would allow us to connect with more um, organizations and individuals across Tacoma um, that we could partner with in the future. Next slide, please. To wrap this up, I wanted to provide a few quick notes. Um, first, we as I mentioned, are always looking to expand our um, collaborations and partnership. Um, so if you know any organizations or individuals or you yourself are interested in partnership, please reach out. Um, you can email us, myctacoma at gmail.com, or talk to me. Um, I'm always looking forward to um, connecting um, and learning more about how we can um, partner. Um, 
And so I'd really appreciate it if you could share in any of your relevant circles. Um, lastly, I wanted to give a big thank you um, to Mayor Woodard, since she's um, here in the room especially, um, for being really the um, spearhead of creating the Youth Commission, and I know um, Chair Mello was involved in that too pretty early on. Um, thank you for having us. Great job, Chair Brewster. Well done. Before we move on to our final presentation of the evening and then open it up for public comment, let me turn to my colleagues to see if they have any questions about um, the, what we heard from Mayor Woodard, Deputy Mayor Walker, or Chair Brewster. Uh, Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair, and I'm just gonna throw this out here. Um, I represent Lakewood. Lakewood has a youth council that works in partnership with the school district and the city council, and I would be very interested in helping to facilitate maybe the city of Lakewood and the city of Tacoma having a youth summit. Um, so now, I don't actually represent, I mean, I represent them, but I can't tell the city of Lakewood what to do. They get, they get very upset when I try and do that. Um, so, but I'm happy to have that conversation um, if that's something of interest. So I'm just going to throw that out there. That's a great idea. I don't see any other um, hands. We were reminded of a lot of great partnerships uh, and work that we're doing um, with the city of Tacoma. Thank you to Deputy Mayor Walker and Mayor Woodards for uh, helping highlight some of those major partnerships that have really taken shape over the past few years. Um, but we work all the time, right, with our partners in Tacoma and Pierce County, whether it's governing the health department or the Pierce Transit Board or delivering on transportation or economic development projects and, and, uh, and, and many of the initiatives Deputy Walker talked, talked about. Um, and uh, Ashley, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for the energy and insights and commitment that you're bringing for Youth Voice. It, it's, this was very great to see. Thank you very, very much. Our final presentation uh, this evening, again, before we open it up uh, for community forum to hear from the community, is to get an update on the Summer Teen Late Nights program. Um, as was mentioned by Deputy Mayor Walker, we started the year off in pretty rough shape. There were several significant uh, incidents of uh, gun violence and fatal gun violence um, that really had um, uh, youth at the center of those. And the community really came together and, and really took this very seriously. One of our key partners um, in this community that jumps in head first uh, any time uh, our young people need attention is Green Trike. Um, and I'd like to uh, bring to the podium the Chief Executive Officer of Green Trike, Tanya Duran, whose organization played an absolute central role in the development and deployment of the S Summer Teen Late Nights uh, program. Uh, Tanya, thank you so much for accepting our invitation to be here tonight to share some of the highlights of what we were able to accomplish together in community with this program. Thank you, Chair Mello and the members of the council. I'm always excited and delighted to talk about the Late Nights program. And I just want to say that my heart feels really happy that so much of what we've done tonight, talked about tonight, is centered around our children and youth. And I know we all come together to want to make Pierce County the best place to grow up. So um, anyway, the more evidence of that we have, the better. Um, but as you mentioned, uh, Chair Mello, um, and actually, I, I've worked in this community. I've been at Green Trike Children's Museum at Tacoma for almost 28 years. And the launch of Late Nights was by far the um, fastest and most partnership trust-based experience I've had. I think that um, we all came together and it was probably late April, early May to start talking about this and it was launched in June. So it was very quick and, and what I hope to do tonight is to share with you a little bit about the background, the, the um, the architecture of the system and what we experience. This is kind of a final report and what we see coming up next. Um, you know, late nights programming has existed in Tacoma Pierce County for years and years. So what we did is we were able to use some of the uh, existing ingredients to really lift a larger, a larger system. And I don't want to leave the rest of Pierce County out. I count Council Member Hitchin and I'll talk a little bit more about the work that this county council has done to make sure that we can spread this throughout the county. So be thinking about that as, as we're talking. Um, so let's see, next slide please. 
The design of Late Nights, so as, as we've shared, Late Nights was a response to the, the violence that um, we, our children, were experiencing in our community, and acceptable, of course. So the design of the program was pretty simple. It began the day after school let out, and it ended the day before school began. So it was a seamless summer experience for our youth. It serves students uh, sixth grade through 11th grade, five nights a week, 12 lo locations throughout our city, so it was pretty accessible to any student. It was from 5 to 10 p.m. Students arrived, checked in, and had several choices of activities that they could participate in. Next slide, please. There was open gym, there was art experiences, craft experiences, um, but most importantly, loving adults. So before I get into the, the data here, the system was executed by, um, in addition to the Tacoma Public School System, which was a huge partner that often goes forgotten, I think. We just take them for granted a little bit. But uh, Green Trike, my organization, our job was to be the intermediary or coordinator for all of the work. But the Boys and Girls Clubs, Metro Parks Tacoma, and the YMCA divided up the sites. They took responsibilities for sites. They provided oversight and did an awesome job of recruiting teams of slightly older teens and young adults who spent their summer loving on our kids and did an absolutely amazing job with it. Um, and in terms of structure, the, the most amazing thing to me was that you've got these big organizations, the Boys and Girls Club, the Y, um, uh, Metro Parks Tacoma, they all came together and created standard common, like standard oper operating procedures consistent across the entire system. They paid their staffs the same amount of money. We had the same protocols for safety, security, engagement curriculum across the system. And to lift that that quickly really is pretty unheard of. So we're, we're excited that we got that big piece of work done. I also want to mention that a key piece of this and what the county actually funded was making sure that those adults in the space had some training and some tools in their bag on helping kids through what we know has been a mentally challenging, emotionally challenging time for them. So uh, we made sure that we had social emotional learning, social emotional strategies at the center of all that we did. Um, so the, as I said, it, uh, the, the kids would come, they'd check in. Perhaps the most popular part was dinner, I have to say. <laughs> the kids, um, the staffs did a really great job. It was not pizza every night. They were ordering a diversity of foods from local restaurants, and it was um, kind of telling and heartwarming to see the kids take such uh, comfort in taking the meal with each other every night. So that was a, a really cool thing. I also, when we're talking about partnership, I don't want to leave out the Tacoma Police Department. They had a presence every single night. They had an officer dedicated to late nights, and she would travel to each of the location almost every night and had that presence and had that really wonderful camaraderie with both the staff but also the kids partici participating in the program. And Pierce Transit rocked it. They changed site lo stop locations. They changed their schedule to make sure that at 10 o'clock, near all of the locations that they serve that the kids would have a way to get home. So truly rooted in partnership. Um, the, I wanted to point out, so now we'll kind of dive into some data. This will show you a little bit about who attended and when. So not surprising. Um, and the dip that you see the second week was because that was the 4th of July. <laughs> so we took a couple weeks off the program. But it had a nice continual spike, went down in August, which we expected to see happen. But you see steady growth felt really good, and we had some strategies in place for, for trying to recruit more kiddos. Next slide, please. And so this is kind of who came. It was slightly more male than female, but um, it was, a, a, like I said, a great representation. Next slide, please. This was interesting. We kind of, before we did this, we like, who's going to come? And what really happened is we saw that it was our middle school students who were really coming the most. We have some strategies in place for um, seeing if we can recruit some of the older teens. But this really was that middle school. Uh, we really saw the middle school students coming out and, and taking advantage of the program. Next slide, please. 
we know that we live in a diverse community and that's who came. And so that felt really good. Um, you see, and I'm sorry, it's probably really hard for y'all to see, but um, we did have a, a great mix of students that I think are more, they are, they were more diverse than the community that we're in. So that felt good. Go ahead, please. Something we did different, well different, something that we added um, was most of you are probably familiar with Beyond the Bell and Club B, which is Tacoma Public Schools Expanded Learning Opportunity System. Some of the community providers, the artists, um, the scientists that come in and engage with the students after school, the city of Tacoma put forward some money so that we could, Green Trite could hire some of these folks to come in and add that extra activation. So we had kids making their own Bluetooth speakers. We had kids painting. We had kids doing really cool things. We, this concept of spark and really uh, giving kids as many opportunities as they can to try new things so they figure out really what resonates them with them and what they can get really good at. So we, almost every single location, at least twice a week, we had some of these gig providers coming in and really providing a fun, different experience for our students. Next slide, please. We also, this is a picture of the kids, we also, Green Trike got a private donation from a donor to um, do back to school fair. So we were able to buy a bunch of backpacks, fill it with necessary school supplies, hygiene kits. Next slide, please. Um, we had barbers and hairdressers and nail techs come in. So it felt really good to know that the kids were going back to school, looking and feeling good and having what they needed to be successful. Next slide, please. We're hoping we can do that again next year. The cost of this project. You saw that we served over 1,500 kids, 12,000 visits. It was a $1.6 million uh, budget for the 10-week period. Your tax dollars were hard at work through the county, the city of Tacoma, Metro Parks Tacoma, and Tacoma Public Schools. But what was really wonderful is um, my organization had the honor of working with our philanthropy community to almost match the tax dollars, uh, dollar for dollar. We had our private foundations, private individuals in the community step forward to make sure we could do this. And, and I must say, to see the public and private sector pivot that quickly to something that's never been done and we didn't know what would happen was pretty fantastic. So I think I started by saying it was based in trust and I, I, I really do believe that to be true. Next slide. So what's next? Well, we feel like it worked. Um, you know, evaluate, we, we purposely did not spend a whole lot of time and energy on over evaluating. We did ask the students the kind of experience they had what they'd like to see. We did ask the parents of the, of the children what that felt like for them, but it did work. Um, and I've, a slide coming up has got a quote from a student. But we are planning to do it for the next three years. We've asked our municipal partners to pledge support for three years at the same level. We're not trying to go bigger. We just want to stay, stay current. We had more capacity so we can take more kids. It's not like anybody's going to be left out. Um, so similar budget of 1.6 million. We're also going back to our philanthropy partners to see if they will match the municipal partners and make that three-year commitment. We want to see more of those gig activations that I talked about come in, give kids even more opportunities for trying new things. And one thing we couldn't do this year, there just wasn't time, is to bring in community volunteers. So we're guessing that there are lots of people in the community that would love to come in and hang out, shoot hoops, you know, make bracelets, do whatever it is that they're good at with our students, and, and I think we'd like to see that happen. Next slide. So I will let you read this quote and invite the council. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Mr. Wren, thank you for being with us. Um, thank you for your uh, infectious uh, leadership and um, energy. Uh, and bringing the many partners together in record time, as you indicated, and leveraging uh, public dollars and, and private dollars to make these experiences safe, wonderful experiences available for young people to keep them safe. Um, are, there, are there questions from my colleagues about what we've heard? We did place um, uh, 
dollars in our budget to meet this call to action to plan for at least the new years two two year two next two years we do two year budgeting at Pierce County so we've made a commitment to make sure especially to do our part to make sure that young people outside of Tacoma um, where our responsibility mainly lies at the county so that kids in Bonnie Lake and Fife and Fircrest and University Place and Parkland Spanaway and the Key Peninsula can have um, safe places to be and uh, looking forward to that. Um, you've mentioned the partners many times and, and the public partners and here are some of the investors, but you've, you've also mentioned it, but um, it, we can't thank them enough, but the expertise of your partners like the Boys and Girls Club and the local YMCA whose staff teams we're, we're the real on the we're, along with Metro Parks Tacoma and Tacoma Public Schools, uh, the YMCA um, in this community and the Boys and Girls Clubs of this community really opened their doors and were sites and professional staff, um, and I, I know you coordinated them and helped helped lead them, and but they they played instrumental roles. Well, Chair Mello, if I may, we were so busy racing to get it up. It was really the efforts of the council doing the doorbelling, helping us with marketing, um, JMAC getting involved. I mean, it, it really was a community effort, and so um, I appreciate your kind words, but it, it truly was our pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing the success, and we look forward to next year. Um, that does bring us to section 11, which is community forum. Community forum is an opportunity Thank you. for members of the for members of the community to address uh, the council on any topic that is of significance to or affecting Pierce County government. There is a three minute time limit. We ask you to state your name if you would like it on the record, and that you direct all comments uh, to the chair. We'll start with those who are here in person with us. Um, I'm, I'm looking on the sign-in sheet to see if anyone has indicated their desire to speak. And I don't see anyone in the sign-in sheet with their desire to speak, but perhaps there was something you learned today that, that did inspire you to speak. Well, we're just going to invite you to the podium. Uh, so is, is anybody in person wishing to provide, to participate in community forum? You'll have three minutes to make remarks. We fully welcome you. Please come to the podium. State your name for the record. You'll have three minutes. Councilmember Bushnell. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Merrill. My name's uh, Joe Bushnell. I'm the Tacoma City Council Member for District 5. Um, I didn't plan on coming up to speak, but uh, since no one else uh, wanted to come up, I thought I'd say a few <laughs> words. Um, I, I really appreciate the, the partnership uh, with the Chair and the Council, and, and really I, I, I appreciate all the, the work that you guys are all doing um, and all the partnerships uh, that you have talked about today. I'm really excited and optimistic about the future, and I think having um, having you here at this location, at this time, at this place, it feels right, it feels good, and I know a lot of uh, our members of our community are going through challenging times, uh, but I, I hope that they can see that we are working together uh, to try and make a better future for all of us. So thank you so much for being here, and I'm really happy to uh, to be here, so thank you. Thank you for those remarks, Councilmember Bushnell. Thank you for your partnership. We have someone joining us, and Every, others are, are welcome. Welcome. Hi, thank you. My name is Renee Cornelier. Um I am kind of concerned. There's a there's a couple of houses in our neighborhood that were recently vacated. People passed away. Things like that. Um, there's this R E I T S um, real estate investment trust that comes in and buys these homes and turns them over with a ridiculous amount of. of they're, the cost of living is just going up. People can't buy these houses because these investment opportunities. So the ability for the investors to buy the properties needs to go. It needs to abolish. I, I know a lot of people in the retirement programs and things. They're they're just you know putting money into a thing and the money's being invested. They don't even know that they're doing this. It, that this this has to stop. This R E I T S has to stop in Tacoma. These people, three houses in my neighborhood in the last year have been turned over by, the, you know, people can't even afford to live there. There's four women that are maybe 40 years old renting one of the houses. It's ridiculous. It's, it's not worth that much. 
It, you know, it's the same house as I have, but uh, you know, it's ridiculous that these people can buy these things. And that also adds to your, they're also the people that want to buy a house or in the other apartments and everything else. If you got rid of that, it'd help a lot. Um, let's see, the other thing I was going to say. Oh, the, the scholars program for the after school stuff, the scholars program was just canceled um, through the, the Hilltop Heritage School, which benefited everyone. It had um, nutrition, it had uh, to free tutoring for an hour, and then a social engagement program, and it was until five o'clock every day. So it essentially was like a latch key, but for junior high and high school kids. There's a lot of kids out there that can't commit to a whole from five o'clock check-in to 10 o'clock, or all of that kind of stuff. But this was also during the school year, and, and Peace Community Center ran it. Ran it. And Peace, Com Peace Com Community Center decided to take a change direction. And unfortunately, a lot of us thought that it was just because of the funding, so we all donated more. They, they still changed direction, and they kept the money. So, so um, I, I know a tremendous amount of tutors and staff that would love to be employed again in that manner. Now they're scurrying for jobs, and, and they're, they were wonderful. They could maybe join the staff over here, but it, they, they, they worked with the school district. They actually came excuse me, they actually came to Hilltop Heritage so the kids didn't have to go anywhere, they were already there. And then they could either get a ride home or the parents came and picked them up at five o'clock. And that was a, just a tremendous benefit, especially after COVID, all the kids that failed on the online schooling, all of their grades came up. It was wonderful, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, let me see what else I can tell you. Um, my notes are pretty bad, sorry. But I, I think that if the, the properties thank get you. better, it'll be good. Just thank to be fair so to much. everybody. I th appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your concerns with us. Uh, Venus, you were next. And then Teresa. Venus? Yes. Good evening. It's nice to see you here um, this evening. And I'm glad that I came to learn about your homeless strategy because I haven't been able to watch the Pierce County meetings recently. So listening to the plan that you have in place um, was very informative. Um, and I'm hoping that you partner well with the city of Tacoma. I'm involved with um, transitional housing, and I didn't hear that portion of it in your um, in the in the strategy tonight. And I don't know where transitional housing is going to uh, is going to play in this. Um, as you uh, may remember, uh, Councilmember Mello, um, I was on the neighborhood council when we had the tiny home site come in, in South Tacoma, in the area that you represent, and we were very involved in that when that came to fruition and I'm currently involved in it now as I'm on the Lehigh board and so I've been very involved with the process of the tiny home site and I really really think that if you have transitional housing or permanent supportive housing you should communicate with the um, resident uh, resident board members who are on there um, we are very involved with the tiny home site the safety of the residents we communicate with the residents and we listen to their needs and their concerns because there are a lot of needs and concerns even in transitional housing um, so I ask that you reach out and communicate closely with those who work in those um, in those areas I also would like to um, bring up public safety. I didn't hear anything about that, and that's a real concern, as we know all over. Public safety is a real concern, and that goes hand in hand with homelessness and affordable housing as well. Because th these members are gonna be our residents, and we're all, all of us are concerned about public safety at this time. And I think the county, and I haven't had a chance to go to a city council meeting, but my suggestion is, is that whenever you approve any affordable housing, um, and I like the way that, that it was, um, that you're doing it, the way I saw it tonight, but I think you need to include what the statistics are, are in regards to infrastructure, in regards to um, um, first responders and police because we don't hear enough of that in our community and there's a lot of rumors that go around and a lot of things go on social media. The police can't do this or the police won't come. You can call the police. 
we need to know what the statistics are. As you bring more people into our community, we need to know wh how the services are gonna be, what the status is of our services and our infrastructure when all of these people come into our community. Because my understanding is that we're short staff, na short staff now. And if you approve housing for 200, 300 more people, and every time you rubber stamp that, what's the t statistics for the safety of these people that are moving into our community? It's a struggle now, and we need to know what the statistics are every time it, it, you're approving for hundreds of more people to move into our community, whether it's the homeless or new residents that are coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have to be fair to everybody. So, yeah, that's how annexation, voting on it next, uh, next Tuesday at City Council. Just, it's been five years. I f it f feels like 15. Do, do, do you mind uh, saying your name for the record in the microphone for the, for the benefit of the club? Uh, Venus Durgan, resident of Manitou and South Tacoma. Thank you. Thank you, Venus. Teresa. Hi, I'm... Oh, Please introduce yourself yes, for the record. For, I was going to say that, but I wanted to direct it to you because you said I needed to direct it to you. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you. Um, I'm Teresa Power Drudis. I live in the hilltop, so I'm one of Brian Mello's constituents and the county's constituents too. I was listening and happy to hear the conversation about land acquisition, the possibility of land acquisition. And I just wanna say that a 50 year timeline or mandate that that be kept for housing is a good thing. And when I was 20, 50 years seemed like quite a while. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm pushing 70, I wanna just say land trust. Can you do land trust instead of things that run out at all? Just um, hold on to that land, get it, hold on to it for the community because if someone had been sitting in these seats doing that 50 years ago, we'd be in better shape right now. The other thing I want to address is that we really need the leadership for this unified approach to homelessness. And there are a lot of cities adopting policies that are just not working. The sweeps don't work. You'd be hard pressed to find anybody doing outreach who says, hey, this is working. You'd be hard pressed to find anybody who's homeless saying, hey, this is working. You just heard that 200 people out of more than 2,000 got into housing. And if you think those 200 people are still gonna be in housing a year from now, you're not looking, you're not paying attention. So we need something unified. We need to know what the data is. We need transparency. And people who are working with the contracted outreach teams, they have access to some data, but there are a lot of other people working throughout the county, throughout the county trying to address this. And when we look at a website that says there's housing available, at this shelter or that shelter, and it's not, you're doing a disservice to us, you're wasting our time, and you're wasting the help that we're trying to give to people. So please clean that up, get some, I know that there's some work being done on it, but the county is in a great position to have a dashboard that actually gives us the facts and gives the community the facts about how few spaces they're actually available. And please do include, if you're gonna say there are five beds available someplace, but they're only available for youth, say that. If they're only available for veterans, say that. Don't tell the community that there are all these spaces available when they are, on, are not. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for those thoughts. If any other member of the public wishes to address the council, we invite you to the podium. State your name for the record. You have three minutes to make your remarks. Welcome. Oh, welcome, thank you. Um, Okay, uh, my name is Adria Buchanan. I'm executive director of the Fair Housing Center of Washington. I'm also uh, chair of the SHAPE Advisory Board and a resident of University Place and mother to a uh, future community leader. Um, so uh, I wanted to talk about the, the last analysis of impediments to fair housing choice that was done for Pierce County in 2019. 
And um, as Mr. Schmidt mentioned, we're waiting final ruling on the AFFH and the implementation of a more robust um, equity assessment around housing challenges. And so I want to encourage anyone who's working on the equity assessment for Pierce County to engage our agency. We've done this work for a really long time and um, we serve 23 counties. So we've done analysis of impediments to fair housing for jurisdictions for the last 20 years. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, you know, in line with the challenges that we're seeing, um, homeowners associations continue to be a huge problem. And so um, not just for Pierce County, but, you know, throughout, throughout the state and throughout the country. Um, many of our clients are individuals who are disabled, um, they're renters, they are home, homeowners, they are potential home buyers. And so um, what we find is that these homeowners associations, um, people will become elected to the board and they have no idea what their res responsibilities are to uphold fair housing laws. And so, um, and so it's really, important that anybody <laughs> that any, anybody who is um, <laughs> it's it's very important that anybody who is um, being elected to these positions that they understand what their responsibilities are um, okay and then the last thing that I wanted to say is that our agency we um, for those who are online and those in the room, our agency, like I said, we serve 23 counties, but our mission really is to prevent, mitigate, and eliminate unlawful housing discrimination and to promote inclusive communities. And so um, for individuals who feel like they're experiencing discrimination, um, they can contact our agency. For, um, oh. It's not broken. <laughs> um, and we'll for, pay for it, Austin. For um, <laughs> housing providers who are kind of navigating fair housing laws, and then for policymakers who are trying to create more inclusive communities, um, we just welcome welcome any collaboration and uh, further engagement with stakeholders who are are trying to um, help further our mission. So thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing those resources. Are there other members of the community wishing to participate in community forum here in Edison Square? Does her son want to introduce himself? Does the young man want to introduce himself in those fun boots that are ready for the rain? I'm Otto Kalulin and I'm Adrian's son. And bye. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Hi. Hi there. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that we weren't allowed to speak to anything on the agenda, but I want to speak to the affordable housing plan. Am I Go for to it. Do that? Okay. So I'm Amanda DeShazo. You can, I, folks can talk about whatever they want to talk about as long as it relates to county business tonight. Okay, perfect. I appreciate that because I've sat here for a very long time. Um, so my name is Amanda DeShazo. Um, I'm honored to represent the Affordable Housing Consortium as its executive director. Um, today I stand before you to express our firm support for the Pierce County Human Services Department Housing and Related Services Sales Tax Expenditure Plan. Ah. Um, in Pierce County, the recent passage of the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act has paved the way for progress with 3,000 housing units already in the development pipeline um, and half of those being generously funded by Pierce County. So the expenditure plan is not just a roadmap, it's a strategic framework that outlines how these vital funds will be allocated to make a lasting impact on affordable housing in our community. So initially we had concerns about the 10% withheld for program administration. However, after discussions with Mr. Schmidt, I feel confident that those funds will be instrumental in supporting Pierce County's efforts to advance affordable housing development. They'll be crucial for staffing to aid land acquisition and building the capacity of the housing department. Um, and this in turn will empower the department to monitor funded, funded projects, ensuring they comply with affordability requirements and hopefully the staff can help with some expedited permitting for affordable housing as well. Uh, moreover, we look forward to the creation of a housing equity plan and the Affordable Housing Consortium is prepared to actively contribute to that. We stand ready to offer valuable insights from developers and housing professionals on how we can make affordable housing accessible for all. So I'll stress the significance of a well-informed and efficiently executed racial equity plan as it's desperately needed for Pierce County. 
Uh, we, are we are dedicated to holding Pierce County accountable for creating a more just and equitable housing landscape, and we urge you to partner with people li with lived experience, the Continuum of Care, and the Fair Housing Center of Washington to develop this plan. So in conclusion, we firmly believe that the Pierce County Human Services Plan is a crucial step towards addressing the urgent affordable housing needs in our community, and we stand united in support of the strategic allocation of the funds and commend the county's dedication to creating positive and lasting change. Thank you all so much for your work. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for being with us, and thanks for the work you did to help uh, ensure the County Council approved the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act. Any other member of the community wish to participate in community forum? Anything related to county business? We welcome your thoughts. Say your name for the record. You have three minutes. Malachi, welcome. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Malachi. I am a resident of Tacoma and live in County District 4. Um, really want to say thank you to uh, the chair and the council being here tonight, as well as uh, the true brains of the operation, Evan, for coordinating this. I can second that as a job shot on you, Mr. Mello. Um, it, I really wasn't, I didn't know what, what to expect coming here tonight, but it was really insightful and very informative as to hearing how the county is collaborating, excuse me, with um, our local partners and as well as other community members to approach affordable housing. So I can want to commend the county on, on doing that as well as um, saying thank you to the chair of the Mayor's Youth Commission coming here tonight as well as saying a few words. I for one has, have always been an advocate for um, having more youth presence here in our local uh, government on all levels of government. So I uh, really want to say thank you for coming here tonight and sharing more about how the Mayor's Youth Commission is um, um, just partnering with our local community and making um, a major presence here. And I wanted to question the county council here. So can we expect the county youth commission? And if so, how would that look like? So again, uh, thank you for uh, making this happen. It was really great and for everybody coming here tonight. And I hope you all have a good one. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, Malachi. Thank you for those thoughts. Anyone else here in Edison Square? wish to provide comments in community forum. I'm not seeing any. Mr. Weinsbury, is there anybody in the Zoom room? Um, yes, for any, for any members of the Zoom who wish to make public comment, press the raise hand icon at Zoom or star nine or your telephone keypad. I see no hands this time, Chair. Sure. Thank you. Well, seeing no hands, we'll close the community forum portion of our meeting um, and bring it back to the council. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here to learn with us about some exciting partnerships and progress this year. Thank you for being here. For those of you who uh, were brave enough to speak and provide feedback uh, and insight, we really appreciate it. Uh, we learned a lot from many of you and taken uh, a lot of your suggestions um, and input and reflections. As just a couple of them, we can't, I can't uh, reflect on all of them, but just a couple of them. Um, I think we're gonna have some really exciting news here real soon to announce about land trusts. And we're, we'll be making a public uh, announcement about a public investment here soon. I'm looking at Mr. Barbie. Uh, so look, look for something exciting about uh, investing in the creation of a Pierce County Land Trust or bringing that capacity really seriously and, and uh, meaningfully to Pierce County. So more to come very soon on that. Um, and I know the department staff from the Human Services Housing Division heard the comments about the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act, um, about fair housing in general, about the equity plan. So I, I know the division staff were, were listening and taking notes. Um, so thank you for all, all the different feedback we've received on the different topics and for being here. Uh, are there any other business or thoughts by my colleagues? <coughs> Ms. Long, any other business for council this evening? Not for staff. Well, again, grateful to our hosts, uh, Edison Square, um, and the small business community here in South Tacoma Way. Thank you to all of our presenters and partners who took time to prepare for tonight for us to help share with the community. Thank you to Evan for organizing us and, and our staff for working so hard. We wish everyone a, a really safe and joyful holiday season and seeing no other business before the Pierce County Council, we are adjourned.